the cardiovascular disorder epidemiology it is the number one cause of death globally accountable for 31% death in india it accounts for 28% of death <coughs> and of which around 60% of the cad patients are young less than 40 years and we know the traditional risk factors of the cardiovascular disease like diabetes lipid disorder risk factors and cardiovascular disorders the higher the risk score we calculate the risk score on the basis of framingham heart study most of the people we see that are not having more than one or two risk factors around 20% of the patient do not have any risk factors also there are 60% of patient those who develop coronary events have only one or even none of the traditional risk factors and more than half of have either normal or mildly increased lipid value so what is the cause why they develop a heart disease or cardiovascular disorder at young age this is a well known slide which was published around in, in 2004 by willerson in which it was <coughs> The, ro the role of inflammation was assessed in CBD. This, uh, the CRP level we know C-reactive protein, which is a marker of inflammation. And we know the higher the risk uh, score of Framingham estimate, more the chances of having a CBD. But when we categorized these patients on the basis of risk score, the higher the level of CRP, that is more than three. the more chances of having a relative risk of cbd similarly if we know ldl cholesterol is a very traditional risk factor for cbd those who had higher the crp level had more chances of developing relative risk of cbd so crp is an important biomarker of inflammation in 2003 cdc said that measurement of crp may help direct further evaluation and therapy in primary prevention of cbd and they also said that entire adult population should not be screened for crp for purpose of cardiovascular risk assessment in 2010 aha guidelines for assessment of cardiovascular disorders in asymptomatic adults said that major crp in apparently healthy elderly people to identify them at cardiovascular risk in 2013 the aha guidelines for treatment of blood cholesterol to reduce the atherosclerotic cardiovascular risk in adults said that use of crp should be done to risk stratify high risk patients for the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease so coming to we know the inflammation basically starts with the entry of monocytes inside the endothelium in the tunica intima and ldl enters <coughs> enters the uh, intima it get oxidized oxidized ldl works as a trigger for inflammation and it activates the monocyte which get converted into macrophage by stimulating natural factor kappa beta pathway or pp pipar gamma agonist pathway or stimulate by uh, stimulating dendritic cells the nfk beta pathway is stimulated by macrophage and kynurin pathway is stimulated by dendritic cells stimulation of macrophage leads to release of inflammatory markers mediators like crp cd4 ligands tnf alpha il1 il6 and it further stimulates and release the addition molecule like vacam and icam1 which which uh, starts a vicious cycle of inflammation the vacam and icam cause further addition of monocyte and further migration into the intima and leads to stimulation of macrophage and further release of inflammatory mediators kynurin pathway basically works with uh, stimulation of tryptophan of which the 3 haa is one of the metabolite which helps in defense mechanism against the inflammation we will go through that in next few slides so we can uh, suppress the uh, treat the disease by in, uh, inhibiting the inflammation at the vessel lumen by using anti inflammatory drug we are traditionally using statins yeah. 
we are using statins as an anti-inflammatory drug and also using antiplatelets like aspirin or pipar, gamma agonist like thiazolidine diones. We can inhibit the pathway of inflammation by using HAA, which is one of, which is one of the metabolites of tryptophan, by inhibiting kinolin pathway, or also use curcumin, which was just discussed few, uh, half an hour ago by Doctor from orthopedic side, which is a, which is an NFK beta inhibitor. This slide has already shown. We know that NFKB beta is uh, inside the cytoplasm in the inactive stage. Stimulation of any sort of inflammation leads to stimulation of IKKB, which gets separated from NFKB, which leads to conversion to active molecule, which translocates into the nucleus and leads to release of <laughs> various inflammatory mediators like TNF alpha, L6, IL1 beta, HSCRP, and various addition molecules. And this addition molecule leads, leads to inflammation. And we know curcumin has multiple sites of action. It uh, prevents the activation of NFK beta. It prevents trans translocation of NFK beta into the nucleus. It prevents release of inflammatory mediators. So curcumin has anti-inflammatory role in CBD. It was noted that it decreases CRP from 3.4 to 2.0 mg <coughs> and malonodialdehyde. It decreases the MI associated with CABG from 31.1% from from 30% to 13.1%. It significantly reduces the LDL cholesterol. It prevents progression of diabetic nephropathy by adenosine proteinuria. And it decreases the fasting blood sugar, HbA1c, and human resistant, insulin resistant index like the HOMA IR. Coming to other pathway that is kinolin pathway, we know tryptophan is stimulated by release of <coughs> indoor amine 2 3 deoxygenase from dendritic cell, which converts tryptophan into kinolin, and ultimately 3 hydroxy xanthanoic acid is stimulated, is secreted which is basically has an anti atherosclerotic and it causes reduced reduction of LDL cholesterol. 3-HAA, which is 3-hydroxy xanthroanalic acid, is an intermediate <coughs> metabolite of tryptophan when metabolized through chiral pathway. In macrophage, 3-HA can inhibit the activation of NFK-beta. It, act, it induces the activity of inducible nitric oxygen stage, which increases the level of uh, nitric oxide. It inhibits the IL-2, IL-7 and IL-15 stimulation. 3-HAA can reduce the uptake of oxidized LDL by macrophage and prevents further formation of foam cell. Effect of 3-HAA on lipid metabolites related genes was noted and it was found that it inhibits the TN alpha in macrophage. It involves PPAR which contributes to the, to the effect of 3-HAA on plasma lipoproteins. It significantly increases the liver Messenger RNA and APOA1 and APCA1 leads to increase in HDL cholesterol and it also increases the LRP1 messenger RNA which leads to reduce plasma level of VLDL. Effect of 3-HAA was also studied on plasma lipid and it was found that it decreases the plasma cholesterol and also triglyceride. It lowers the VLDL cholesterol and raises the HDL cholesterol. So it was found that it significantly decreased the plasma lipid by one third to two third levels. Effect of inflammation was studied and it was found that it reduces the infiltration of CD4 cells in atherosclerotic lesion. So it significantly reduces inflammation and there was, it was noted that it reduces the 80% reduction in atherosclerotic lesion. So in summary, 3-HAA is a intermediate product of chiral pathway that is tryptophan metabolism. It has, it is clinically significant benefit in <coughs> and is a powerful inhibitor of atherosclerotic lesion. Beneficial effect on lipid metabolism with reduction of VLDL calomacron and increased HDL level was noted and it can significantly reduce the vascular inflammation. Other targets for anti-inflammatory drugs are under study like succinquilol which is an antioxidant Phospholipase inhibitors, which causes lipoprotein modification and release of bioactive lipids. Phospholipase inhibitor, like, uh, 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 like uh, which is already under phase three trial, various leukotriene antagonist, 
which target the flap molecule <coughs> then leukotriene molecules ccr2 molecules tnf alpha mediated effects by tnf inhibitors il1 mediated effect by il1 pathway and various other part, uh, targets for anti inflammatory drugs are being tried in various trials so to conclude despite optimal therapy fit with current knowledge still one third of uh, patients of low risk individuals with 0 to 1 frs score have been known to develop ascvd and tackling inflammation provides potential to improve cardiovascular outcome further control of inflammation may help in further reducing morbidity and mortality in patients with cvd thank you